My name is Michal Zamboy and I'm from the Charles University in Prague. First of all, let me thank the organizers of ICGG for this possibility to present our contributions even in these complicated times. I will speak about constructions in the four-dimensional space using stereographic projection. To build up the upcoming analogy, let me start with the stereographic projection in the three-dimensional space. Let us have a sphere, and let me call it a two-sphere, in a three-dimensional space. It is sitting on a tangent plane at the south pole, and we project points of this sphere from the north pole. Well, up to one point, which is the north pole itself, that is projected to point at infinity. Stereographic projection preserves circles, and so circles on sphere become circles in the plane. Well, up to the circles passing through the North Pole, which become lines. This model we created was in the three-dimensional space. To use such visualization in the four-dimensional space is beyond our possibilities. And so, instead, we will use two-dimensional picture of a three-dimensional case. For this purpose, we can use Monge's projection, in which we have two projections of the object in a three-dimensional space into the horizontal and into the vertical plane. Then the horizontal plane is rotated into the vertical plane, and so we can see the whole object in two conjugated images in one picture plane. See that conjugated images of, a, of the two sphere are two disks. The whole stereographic image will cover the whole picture plane. Well now, we can use this analogy in the fourth dimension. And so, we will use two projections of the fourth dimensional space onto two three-dimensional spaces. Similarly to Monge's projection, we can use double orthogonal projection of the four-dimensional space into two mutually perpendicular three-dimensional spaces to project some objects in the four-dimensional space. Let us have two free spaces, x, y, w and x, y, z and one of them is rotated into the second free space, so we obtain one modeling free space. The free sphere would have two conjugated images, which are two balls. Now we can see the stereographic projection of the free sphere into the three space x, y, z. The stereographic projection is from the north pole, which would be, in this case, the point with the highest w coordinate. The stereographic image of the whole free sphere would cover the whole free space. And so, let's see how does an analogy to spherical quadrangle, which would be some kind of hyperspherical hexahedron, look like. On the bottom, we can see the stereographic image of this hexahedron. And we can also see two conjugated images of this object. We can even play a little with its parameters to really grasp how does a space in the three-dimensional sphere looks like. The double orthogonal project projection actually is some kind of descriptive geometry method. So we can also use some synthetic constructions to create stereographic images of objects. Let us see how does that work. In the double orthogonal projection, we can use analogic methods to the Monge's projection. Observe a point A on the free sphere. It is actually located with some section, which is a two sphere. To find its stereographic projection, we connect the point A with the North Pole 
and find intersection of this joining line with the x, y, z free space. See the point AS on the bottom. It is the stereographic image of the point A. Moreover, we can project more points and have something like hypospherical tetrahedron. See, the stereographic projection again preserves circles and so the edges of the tetrahedron are circular arcs. Now we can circumscribe a two-sphere around this tetrahedron. We can say its stereographic projection and also its pre-image into double orthogonal projection. Conjugated images of this two-sphere will be two ellipsoids. Again, they are circumscribed around conjugated images of the tetrahedron. It is also important to say that we can not only construct the stereographic images, but we can create pre-images of points from the stereographic images. We will use this in the next application. Now, when we can construct pre-images from the stereographic images, we can actually draw anything in the three-dimensional space and project it back into the free sphere in the fourth dimension. For example, this is ICGG written in the stereographic projection. Inside of the free sphere, we can see how would ICGG look like in the fourth dimension. Of course, this is quite a silly application, but for this time, I will leave further consequences for your imagination. In geometry, we often use higher dimension to define objects or solve problems of lower dimensions. For example, the conic sections are often defined as sections of conical surfaces with planes in the three-dimensional space. Similarly, circle inversion could be defined as composition of two stereographic projections. We will see an analogy in the four-dimensional space when we can create spherical inversion as a composition of two four-dimensional stereographic projections. Let us have a point A and a two-sphere in the lower XYZ free space. To construct its spherical inverse, we can use stereographic projection from the north pole of a free sphere depicted in the picture and so the point A is projected on the free sphere and back again to its original free space from the south pole. And so we obtain the point A prime, which is the inverse image of the point A. Now we can actually create some objects, for example a tetrahedron ABCD with straight edges. Its inverse image will be a tetrahedron with circular edges. Now we can also circumscribe a two-sphere around the tetrahedron ABCD and its inverse image will again be a sphere circumscribed about the inverse image of the tetrahedron. This way we actually created the construction of spherical inversion with the use of four-dimensional interpretation. But forgetting about the four dimension, the whole model is in the three-dimensional space. So we actually created elementary three-dimensional construction to create spherical inverse. For the next application, assume the hop vibration. That is a mapping between circles on a free sphere and points on a two sphere. Now we can have two conjugated images of free sphere 
and we choose the top image to be the base 2 sphere. So the points on the top 2 sphere have assigned circular fibers inside of the free sphere. We can see their conjugated images. Now, if we move the point along some curve on a two sphere, it will create cyclic surface inside of the free sphere. For this purpose, we chose the Clelia curves. See that it has a beautiful parametrization. Speaking about circles and spheres, to visualize such object in the, from the four-dimensional space, we can again use the stereographic projection to obtain the surface in the three-dimensional space. Now, we can also choose different parameters for these Clelia curves. And that is all. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward for your remarks and questions.